before we can start creating web pages using E107 software, there are a couple of things we need to do. First of all, we need to download the installation file and then actually install E107 onto our server. Now the process of download and installation is very similar to any other CMS installation. First of all, we'll need to download the installation file. There are a couple of ways of actually finding this file and the very easiest one is actually just to type the URL which is e107.org. Of course, we can use any other search engine and just search for e107 which will show like this and give us the exact same link. Okay, so this is the main page of the E107 and it's actually got some information here as well. So let's have a look at those first. It's given the information that it's easy to install, easy to use and easy to customize. So this means that we can actually go about creating our web page very easily. It's time friendly, meaning that it's got drag and drop editing inline editing and batch changes multimedia friendly meaning that we can actually use youtube videos it's search engine friendly as well and actually it's got twitter bootstrap 3 ready which actually fully supports such things as html5 or css3 and so on it's actually got something that they call backwards compatible meaning that you're getting full support of the websites using all the versions of this particular software and it's actually developer ready here as well okay if you move down to the bottom we'll find some more information about those particular things they were just mentioned that it's easy to use it's easy to install easy to customize and whatnot all the way to the top we'll find a link saying get started the blog the knowledge database the hub and the community okay so once we are happy with how everything is looking we can actually go and hit on the download button here and i've done that the file itself is around just below 7 megs and with a decent speed it shouldn't take more than two minutes okay once again you'll find some information here and pay special attention to check your requirements so that's this section here where it's actually going to say the minimum requirements and the recommended requirements which are actually required that you have in order to run this on your server so the minimum requirements is that a web server is running php version 5.3 or higher and it, that it has mysql 4 or 5 then the next minimum requirement is actually to do with the FTP access and the last one is that you have your username and the password for the MySQL database. The recommended settings here is actually going to give a few more information about what's recommended from your server to have in order to run E107 perfectly on your website. Okay, the next section here is the actual download section and I'm going to hit on the very first link here which is E107 2.0 full installation and just make sure that we are downloading the zip file so we're not going to go for the second file but for the zip file okay so I've actually done that before and just to save on time I'm not going to download this file itself what I'll do is actually I'll go to my cPanel so this is on my web page wherever you got your hosting from and there you should find something that's called a mysql database click on this link and now we're going to create a new database i'm just going to call mine e107 and i'm going to hit on create database all right then it's going to present me with some information which is going to be very important later on when we are actually downloading and installing our installation file of the E107. Alright, so once I'm done with that, the next thing I will have to do is actually upload my file onto the server. Now to do that, I'm going to use a software that's called FileZilla. Alright, so this is the FileZilla and what I need to do is I need to type in my host, the username and the password. So this is provided by your hosting service. Once I'm done with that, I'll hit on quick connect and if everything is okay I will actually be connected to my 
hosting service okay all right so on the left hand side i'm gonna have the local host so this is my computer here and on the right hand side i'm going to have my web page or my hosting service right here and here i'll find all of the files now what i need to do is actually find the file that i would like to upload and for me this is actually where it's located and here's the file so this is the zip file that i'm going to transfer over to my web server okay so let's go in here and let's just drag and drop this in here once again depending on the speed it shouldn't take the speed of your internet it shouldn't take that long and you can actually follow the progress right here so at the moment i'm at 7.4 percent of all my files okay so my folder has actually been uploaded to my server there it is and i'll just double click on it which will actually extract everything okay so i'll do that and this should take some time and once again i'm just going to speed up everything and i'll actually continue once everything has been extracted from this zip folder okay and once this is done we'll actually see all these different folders and files on our right hand side which once again is the server side okay so at this point of time we have successfully downloaded the e107 installation file we have actually uploaded it and we have extracted it onto our web server now the next step is actually to access a file that's actually called install.php and start the installation process this is the exact file now there are a couple of ways we can do that we can access the file straight from filezilla or we can go back to our browser and what we need to do is actually type in the full URL of our web page. So whatever your web page might be. So for example, my web URL is this one here. I'm using a free hosting at this point of time. And after that, what we need to do is have a backslash install.php. So whatever your web page is. So for example, you can go with www.mywebpage forward slash install.php all right so after you enter this hit on enter and this should actually actually take us to the installation page as you can see there's eight steps and the very first step is to select your language at the moment there's only english and i'm actually happy with english and i'll go hit on the continue now we come to the database information and this is very important so what i did before i actually created the database and basically this is to store all of our users and all other relevant information and what i've done is actually I created a text file where all my information is located for my my sql database all right so here's the text file I was talking about and let's just shrink it like that and what I'll do is I'm just going to copy and paste the information here the first one is the username so this is my username and I'll copy and paste it the second one is the password and I'll type in the password then we have the my SQL database and my SQL database is actually this one here okay i'll copy that one in there and what i'll do now is i'll actually uncheck this because i have actually created a database already and i'll hit on the continue button okay if everything went well you're going to get information like this so my sql connection verification and you'll find some information here connected to the my sql server established and verified found existing database if you however get some errors here make sure you go and find the configuration file so this is config.php which is available actually on your server now that you have uploaded since you have uploaded all the files from the zip file and changed the permission level there that should actually fix everything that needs to be fixed in order to actually have this verification shown like this okay so this is step three out of eight and we are ready to go to step number four step number four once again you'll get some information about the 
permission checks once again if you do not have all pass 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 here information that means that something's wrong with the configuration and once again go back and change the permission on the actual config.php all right let's go to step number five step number five will actually ask us for some admin details admin username i'm just going to use admin admin display name admin the password password again and the actual email all right so once we're done with that we'll hit on continue okay then it's going to ask us whether or not to save the password i'll say save the password it's going to ask us for the actual name of the website and there we have only one website template we'll install the plugins and we'll actually include all the configuration stuff here as well so here's where you give the name to your web page so i guess this is the very first step of customizing your web page this needs to be done in order to finish the installation so i'm just going to actually go and type in my my website okay i'm going to leave everything as it is i'm going to install the plugins and include the configuration files as well and i'm going to hit on the continue button now all right once again i'll get some information about the installation and here you can see that it's green meaning that it's good and it's actually saying that e107 now has all the information it needs to complete the installation i'll hit on the continue Alrighty, so now we get the information that installation has actually been successful for security reasons we should go and actually change the permissions on the config PHP file so e107 underscore config dot PHP file and we'll change it back to 144 okay you can do that I'm not going to do that however I'm going to go and hit on continue alright so step 8 out of 8 has been actually finished installation has been finished and at the moment this is what my web page looks like it's pretty empty and it does not have any stuff in here and we'll actually have a look how to configure and how to set up the web pages first and we'll go through all the available options and menus and at the end we'll have a video or more videos on actually how to create a web page from the scratch but what we can do at this point of time we can go to the admin area by clicking on this button here it's gonna ask us for our admin login and password and once we actually hit on login and once we have actually logged in this is what we are going to be presented with so if you like this is some sort of a backend or a back office where you would go about creating and actually developing your web page you can go and change the settings and everything else so in the video tutorials following this one and there's going to be a few of them will go through most of these options here and see what's available to us to actually go and create our web page the way we want it so for the download and the installation of e107 this is it now we have e107 running on our web page